Do you know the following situation? You really have to get something done, but you just can't get it started? Well, it's called procrastination. Who in this room believes in, let's say, five years from now, we can overcome procrastination just by pushing a button? Please raise your hands. Well, well five years science fiction. Who believes in five years from now, we can transfer our thoughts from one brain to another? Again, raise your hands. This corner there. And who of you believes this all goes in the completely wrong direction? Nobody should have such superpowers. Please raise your hands. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> let me tell you, these superpowers are just around the corner. And they come with the dawn of neurotechnology, the fusion of technology and the nervous system. But how does it work? Well, the nervous system, the brain, consists of 90 billion nerve cells. Each has 10,000 connections to other nerve cells, and they are communicating and processing information by little electrical pulses. When we see something or when we hear something, this information uh, receives our brain by little electrical pulses, and when we are moving, our brain sends little electrical pulses to our muscles that then contract. We can place electrical contact, so-called electrodes, <coughs> inside the brain and read this brain electrical activity, but we can also write to the brain by sending electrical pulses to the brain, which is then perceived as, for example, a flash of light or a sound, or we can change brain function, a particular brain function, for a little while. When we want to have such a coupling, between technology and the nervous system to be very reliable and work on a daily basis, we put the technology inside the body, so-called electronic implants. I now want to introduce you to two electronic implants that write to the brain and provide superpowers today. The first is a so-called deep brain stimulator. It is an implanted electronic device placed in the chest that sends via a cable underneath the skin electrical pulses to a location deep inside the brain. It was first successfully applied to control the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, like for this gentleman. So the device is on all the time. It delivers electrical pulses to the brain all the time but the patient has a chance to switch it off, in this case, with a magnet. And uh, please see in this video what happens. So the device is now on. He applies a magnet. And immediately, his symptoms kick in. This is a situation this gentleman is in when the device is not writing to his brain. Luckily, he got the magnet to switch the device back on again. And here he goes. So you will see, for him, it's like day and night. For me, it's a very good example how mighty neurotechnology is today. Yeah. There's about a few hundred thousand people that use deep brain stimulators today, which change their life completely. And deep brain stimulation was not only applied to Parkinson's disease, it has been applied to other medical conditions like depression, epilepsy, eating disorders, addiction, you name it. And during their research, Clinical researchers found out that depending where the electrodes in the brains are placed, there's positive side effects on learning capability, attention, on sleep, there's a reduction of short-term memory loss, <coughs> and they also found it can help to overcome procrastination. So, here you go. <laughs> These are all superpowers I would love to have myself in order to pimp my mental performance. The second implant I want to show you 
is a so-called cochlear implant. Cochlear implants help deaf people to hear again. They uh, consist of a sender sticking to the head. The sender sends power and audio data to an electronic device implanted in the head in direct connection to the nervous system. The cochlear implant systems work best when applied to very young kids of only a few months age. These kids then develop good hearing ability, good speaking ability, they can visit regular schools, they can have conversation, and many of them can even enjoy music. There's about one million cochlear implant users today, and newer development remove these senders sticking to the head, hence the technology will become completely invisible. And by the way, cochlear implants can not only use microphones as audio sources, they can also establish a wireless link to an audio system as we have it in this room, so they can bypass airborne sound. The superpowers cochlear implants provide is you can hear things nobody else can hear. Yeah? These are just two examples of superpowers by brain writing. But not only writing to the brain, also reading from the brain can provide superpowers. Today, people put, put hundreds of electrical contacts in or on the brain, recording the brain electrical activity, which is then interpreted by artificial intelligence. This fundamental method has been applied to many studies, and I want to show you a few of those. In the first study, researchers played a famous rock song to people with implanted brain electrodes. The brain activity was recorded and interpreted by artificial intelligence, and the artificial intelligence reconstructed the song the people were hearing. So I want you all now to listen. First, we play the original audio the people were hearing, and then the song reconstructed by artificial intelligence just by brain activity. All in all was just a brick in the wall. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I'm sure you all could recognize the reconstructed song just by the brain data. But what, what does it mean? Well, it means people can use ears of someone as microphone. So much about hearing, but what about vision? A Japanese group implanted brain electrodes in monkey. And they showed monkeys photos of faces, animals, and fruits. They recorded the electrical brain activity and again got artificial intelligence to interpret and try to reconstruct the images the monkeys were seeing. And this is the result. This means you can use eyes as digital cameras today. But we are also able to decode mental states. For example, the level of attention. These Chinese kids had to wear headsets in school. These headsets sense brain waves, and the brain waves correspond with the level of attention they are paying. The light at the front of the headset indicates if a kid is focused <laughs> or if it's daydreaming a little bit. The data is streamed to the tablet PC of the teacher who keeps a record and sends these data to the parents <laughs> who could have a chat with the little fellows after school. I have three little kids in school myself, and I'm very curious how much attention they're actually paying, <laughs> but I still don't want them to be monitored like that. Am I right? But reading from the brain is not only about monitoring. It's also about getting back into control. Today, 
in recent studies shown, it's possible to decode so-called silent speech. Silent speech are words that we imagine, but we do not articulate. This lady in the wheelchair cannot speak because of a disability, but she has implanted electrodes in her brain. The electrodes are connected via the cables that you see to a computer. The computer decodes her brain electrical activity and controls the avatar that you see on the computer screen. And now the avatar can express the words the lady is thinking. With this technology, with this mind-reading technology, she can have conversations, impossible before. Have a look. I was thinking about running to the store. What time will you be home? That's her thoughts. In about an hour. Do not make me laugh. <laughs> what an amazing technology. In particular for a person with a healthy brain locked inside a paralyzed body, having no other means of communication. Mind control of technology. What a superpower. Newer developments overcome the cables, so they are completely invisible. Now I want to invite you to a little experiment of thought. What if we combined the mind-reading technology I just showed you with the cochlear implant technology you saw earlier? Someone with a mind-reading implant can send his or her thoughts to someone else through the internet who is wearing a cochlear implant. This person can immediately understand the thoughts of the first person. If you are using online translation tools, like we all do, they don't even have to speak the same language. Imagine you're receiving in your head the thoughts of a person on the other side of the planet, thinking these in, let's say, Cantonese. The technologies are there, you have seen it with your own eyes, and they work. Let's take it even one step further. When you're wearing a brain mind-reading implant, and you're using it for surfing the internet, for controlling an AI assistant, you can have the research results played back directly into your own brain using cochlear implant technology. What you're effectively having inside your head is a mighty brain coprocessor with virtually unlimited calculation power, unlimited memory, and access to information worldwide. So the potentials of this superpower is absolutely mind-blowing. And honestly, myself, I'm equally fascinated and scared. But let's get back to the title of the talk. The technologies I introduced you to are already a great blessing for millions of patients worldwide. And therapeutic brain writing will become so much better when we combine it with the newer brain reading technologies. So the therapies can be adjusted to the demand of the patient. Although patients will be the first or are the first to benefit from brain implants, there seems to be a hidden agenda. In the past years, we saw two billion US dollars being invested in startup companies that develop implants for mind-reading technology. However, there's only a very few people being so severely paralyzed that they need this technology. So the investment targets a different market. It targets the consumer market, providing superpowers for all. And these superpowers are Enhancement, entertainment, self-optimization, mind control of technology, and brain-to-brain -brain communication. The access to the technology will be similar 
to the access to today cosmetic surgery clinics, not everybody will be able to afford it. The technology will be invisible. So when you're talking to someone, you don't know if this person has superpowers and might share this conversation online with someone else. The options for commercial exploitation and misuse are huge. We all know today Amazon, Google, and Meta know our personal preferences better than our long-standing partners do. Brain implants will make us completely transparent. And note, brain data can contain delicate hints, like on your sexual orientation. You will agree, this is highly sensitive personal data. So, how can we prevent misuse? Luckily, there are people working on standards on cybersecurity for brain implants, on international regulation, on brain data, access, and ownership. Regulations slow down innovation. I know, I know, I know. But we need global regulations, because if I needed a brain implant or someone from my family because of a neurological condition or because of the superpowers, because we want to keep up with the others, I want technology I can trust. And no company, health insurer, authority, or government can access my personal brain data without my permission. Because of the fantastic superpowers brain implant offer, brain implants for consumers will come, period. I'm speaking here today because I believe we need a public debate on disruptive technologies like that, so we understand better each other's concerns and hopes. Now we still have the time to address all these, so we together can look forward to the great benefits the technology provides once it is around.